So, so yeah. So let me do this question. I've done uh, these uh, lens optics questions. Quite a few of them. Um, you should see it in other questions. Here it's uh, um, dealing specifically with a uh, mirror. And in our class, um, you will see that I prefer lenses um, <laughs> because when you draw diagrams, mirrors tend to give you more complicated diagram. So let me uh, sketch it here and you will see what I mean. So uh, we have a shopper um, standing some distance, okay? So this is gonna be object distance from a convex security mirror. Okay, interesting. So let me just uh, draw a representation of optical axis. And we have a convex mirror um, um, in front of which the shopper stands some distance from. This is the object distance the shopper stands from. And it says the shopper sees their own image with a magnification of, okay, 0.33. So I guess uh, the shopper is seeing a smaller image. And I, I think that makes sense because it's, if it's a, imagine a convex uh, mir uh, mirror, it's a kind of mirror that actually uh, displays a smaller image. It's the kind of mirror you would use to uh, use so that you can see a, a wider field of view with a smaller image. So let me do a bit of a ray tracing so that I get a sense of what this looks like. So I have, um, I, whenever you do ray tracing, whether it's for mirrors or lenses, you draw two principal rays. I know a textbook describes three, the third one is really mostly for double check. If you draw everything perfectly with the rulers and whatnot, um, then the third one simply should go through where the two crosses each other. Now I'm doing this freehand, so I don't really want to draw the third one because it's not gonna be exactly right. Um, two is enough to get, give me a sense of where the image is gonna be. So the first principal ray is the ray that's parallel to the axis. That's why I need to, to draw it. So for this ray that's a parallel to the axis, after they go through the optical element, in case of uh, mirror, after they reflect from a mirror, what they should do is um, for a diverging arrangement, like this setup is, it should uh, be on the outgoing side as if it's coming from a focal point of the optical element on the other side. So let me make this more concrete. So with these optical elements like a mirror, you can imagine indicating um, a focal point at, uh, at, uh, at on either side of the, of the optical element. So with a diverging, so with a converging setup, this would uh, reflect and then go through the focal point on the outgoing side. For a diverging setup, you need to draw a kind of a dotted line, kind of an extension of a line from the focal point on the other side to the point where the reflection happening. And what the reflected ray will do is it'll trace out this extension of the line so that it looks like it's coming from this focal point on the opposite side from the outgoing side. Now, with the mirrors, the thing that makes things a little bit complicated is that your incoming side is also the outgoing side. So, um, okay, that's the principal ray number one, and I need the principal ray number two. That's the ray that'll hit the portion where the optical element um, uh, crosses the optical axis. So for that, if I'm drawing this for a lens, I would say, oh, the ray uh, goes through undeflected. That's what we, it would be for a lens. For a mirror, um, I guess the mirror version of that is it uh, undergoes a reflection like it's uh, undergoing reflection from a planar mirror. So here, uh, what that would be is, uh, you know, law of reflection, same incident angle as outgoing angle. Uh, and you know, it makes sense. Here the surface is vertical, so that's why um, it would have kind of do that regular mirror reflection thing. So you have these two, uh, one and two principal rays. You can see that on the outgoing side, they are uh, diverging. So to find an image, you need to look for the virtual image, which will be on the 
um, opposite side from the outgoing side. So I extend this back and they appear to cross here. So this is where the virtual image of the shopper will be. So, okay, I think that actually is enough to answer part A. On which side of the mirror is the image located? Yeah, yeah. So it'll be on the opposite side as the shopper. Uh, diagram is helpful because whatever language they are using, sometimes it can get confusing. Once you have a drawing, you can kind of match the language with the watch of draw. Okay. How far is the image from the mirror? Oh, this is trying to walk you through the solution steps. That's helpful. So this is what it's trying to walk you through. So um, as you look at this question, you will re notice that if you are looking for the focal length, it's not given. You are given the object distance. And um, I have a feeling at some point we'll be using the thin lens equation, 1 over object distance plus 1 over image distance is equal to 1 over f. And um, at this point, this is an equation with the two unknowns. So it's a little bit, um, someone might be lost how to get to it. So it's helpful that they are asking for the image distance because that's the first thing you can actually figure out from the magnification information they have given you. Because if you uh, remember reading through, going through the magnif derivation of the magnification formula, this is an expression that they have derived. Magnif linear magnification of a single lens or single mirror optical arrangement is given by this ratio of the image distance over the object distance. And Technically, there's a minus sign here um, to indicate that if these are both positive, then the real image that forms is upside down. So, so, so because we know the magnification, we know the object distance, we can work out our image distance, or at least the absolute value of it, is equal to, imagine moving this over, magnification times DO. Um, yeah, I, I'll plug in the numbers when I do the check. So the focal length of the mirror would be, now we go through this uh, expression here, the thin lens equation or the optical equation. Um, I'll solve this for focal length. Focal length is equal to, uh, I'm just gonna, oh, let me use a sage method for this. I have a feeling that this is an ideal question to ask statement. So let me define the variables I'm going to use, object distance, image distance, focal length. And I have the equation, um, 1 over do plus 1 over di is equal to 1 over f. And I have a sense I can probably do this uh, solution by hand, but I feel lazy. I don't want to do it by hand. So I say solve this equation for the focal length um, in terms of other things. And it'll do that solution for me. Hopefully, yeah, there it is. That's the solution. So let me just put that as my solution. The previous output, the first element of the previous output. So that's my solution for the focal length. <laughs> um, so when the time comes, um, so let me, I guess, write that down. Um, I think I can say it out loud and remember. So my solution is di times do divided by sum of di plus do. So focal length is di times do divided by sum of di plus do. And uh, so, you know, here it didn't save me that much algebra, but, but you know, if some algebra is tripping you up, uh, my number one recommendation is uh, learn how to use a computer algebra system like a SageMath, which is completely free. Uh, that'll, um, if for no other thing, it'll give you as a kind of a solution reference. You can try doing algebra by hand, see if they match up. I do recommend that you develop your algebra skill. And as you are developing your algebra skill, it's good to be able to check your answer quickly. And this, this really helps. So, and when I plug in the numbers, I am going to be careful about this thing. Di is going to be a negative quantity. So uh, I work out a number here, and when I plug in the number here, my di will be negative. 
And that will give me a negative focal length, which corresponds to this being a diverging arrangement. And finally, where it asks, what is the radius of curvature of the mirror? Uh, there's a formula, another formula, <laughs> that's derived in the textbook that it's uh, good to have memorized. Uh, that's why I have it memorized, which is that focal length of a uh, curved mirror is given by radius of curvature divided by 2. So once I have focal length here, I'm going to, uh, so solving this for r, that's 2 times focal length. So once I have focal length here, I'm going to plug it in here, multiply by 2 to get r is equal to 2 times focal length, and it'll be a negative uh, signed or convex mirror. So let me do that. Oh, so since I have my sage math, I can plug in the numbers here. My image distance, um, absolute value will be 2.6 meters times magnification 0 0.33. Uh, so 0.858 meters from the mirror, that's where the image forms. And for my focal length, uh, I uh, for that I had my solution there. To into that, I'm going to substitute in my object distance of 2.6 meters and my image distance of um, minus 0 0.858 meters. So that tells me our oh, focal length is uh, minus 1.28, and so on. so my uh, radius of curvature it'll be. 2 times minus 1.2806. So, okay, so let me just uh, plug in these numbers to just double check that I got the correct answers uh, in case I <laughs> made a mistake. I don't think I did, but okay, on well, the opposite side is sharper, distance of 0 0.858, focal length being uh, minus 1.281. Yeah, I think it's fine. Um, my radius of curvature is 2.561. So yeah, that's it. Um, it's, uh, uh, and you can kind of see in the diagram why I prefer lenses, uh, because with the mirrors, the diagram gets busy super quickly with these um, doubled over rays and whatnot. I think this is manageable, but once you start adding multiple elements, that's where it, Diagrams involving mirrors get super complicated. So I prefer lenses. <laughs> That's why you've seen me mostly give questions involving lenses and doing questions involving lenses. But I thought it'd be good to do at least one mirror question so that you can see how that gets worked out.